Hello everyone, this is uh, Ed from Elisa. I'm joined by Adam today, who is another one of the senior analysts here. And um, luckily today, we're very pleased to have Session Cam with us. We've got Murray, who is the sales director for Session Cam. We've also got Paul, who is the customer services team manager over there. So hi guys. Hi, hi. So um, let's kick off. Um, give us a brief intro to Session Cam and what it can do. Uh, well, thanks for your time today, guys, and it's uh, really interesting. Session Cam is effectively a, a web session recording tool. So what we do is we record exactly what uh, customers, clients, visitors to your website see uh, in their browser. Um, it's real-time recording, and uh, we'll, we'll look at some of the back-end functionality uh, in a minute. And Session Cam really is essentially there as a, a tool to support uh, you to support customers, their websites, the development of their websites. It works alongside analytics. It doesn't necessarily replace it. It kind of enhances it. It gives you the ability to identify struggle points and how you work with customers to get them past those struggle points. It gives lots of opportunities for remarketing uh, and for really just understanding what customers are really doing on your website. It takes away the kind of guesswork, I, like, I guess, if you, if, if you, if you, you take that view. Great. I'll hand you over to Paul. Paul will take us into the back end. Okay, so what I'll show you today is, this is the screen is the activity inside screen. So I'm logged in through the, the Session Cam console. So the Session Cam is a reporting console which you can um, obtain online. And what we're seeing today is some test sessions that we've created on our own website. Um, the Activity Insight report is where our clients can get access to all of the sessions we've recorded. Um, we've got a few test sessions recorded here, and I'll play one of the sessions immediately now. So I'll just click play on this session. So replay launches in a new window which maximizes your screen. Um, we record at the same screen resolution as your end customer. So this is a, a session that we, we've created earlier. The way that uh, Session Cam works is we're a, a tag based solution. So this is um, recorded based on a tag on the Session Cam website. So a user has gone on, looked at the Session Cam website, and started recording immediately. So this is taking you through the interface of Session Cam. We've got various options within our replay capability. Um, so the ability to, to play and skip. So very much like any uh, video controls, skipping in this instance will skip to the next page that the customer saw during their session. We've got the ability to control the speed of the session, so I've got a fault we play back at the same speed as the end user. So you can speed up that uh, replay, so you can then whiz through a session fairly quickly. We show progress within the session. Now, progress is based on events, events being things like key presses, mouse movement, clicks. Um, so the bar will uh, fill up as we go through the session, but it's not based on time, it's based on those events. You can see um, if a user has had more activity on one page compared to the other. I want to show you how many pages that the customer saw. So this session is a 12-page session, and we're currently viewing the first page. We've got some uh, unique information as well that we catch around the session, which you can see under the show session information box. So we click this box, and then see um, some information about the session. So we show when it was recorded, the screen resolution of the, the end user, their browser, their operating system, and whether there is a referrer as well. We've also, through this capability, got the ability to skip directly to certain pages that they saw. So you can, in effect, jump to a page that you're really interested in. If you want to analyze a specific page, you can use this tool to jump to that page immediately. Can we see, um, can we see this page playing? Sure. So if I click Play now, Notice the mouse at the top of the screen is my mouse, and then there's a mouse near the telephone number, which is actually the, the mouse of the, the end user. So you can see that we capture the actual mouse position. We do that several times a second, and then replay it accordingly. You can see here that the, the user clicked on the, the right-hand arrow, which then changed the image. So we capture Ajax and DOM type changes automatically, so there's no additional tagging whatsoever. So, Paul, it's Adam here. Just, just a quick question. Um, sure. Does it capture the latest version or, or what was happened at the time? So if my website has changed subsequently. Yeah. So how we work is we um, behind the scenes we capture 
capture the HTML and all of the assets on the web page, then store those assets on our servers. So we always have a latest or a relevant copy, I should say, of the web page that the customer saw. So if the customer uh, saw a, a certain version of the penalty website yesterday and saw that version of the website, if you then replay that session tomorrow and say those changes made to your website, you'll always see the actual web page that the customer saw because we keep a copy of all of the changes are in. And um, yeah. once a session is recorded, how long does it take for it to appear in the session cam interface? Very quickly. Um, we push sessions through once the last event on the first page is recorded. So we'll push, literally, we'll, we'll push sessions through which are still in progress and we'll continually be um, processing them. Um, so literally within a few, sometimes a few seconds, it might take up to a minute or two, but it's more or less in real time. Okay. And just just to confirm, this this mouse movement is is the video. It's not it's not you mouse you moving it. It might be confusing for some people who haven't seen this before. But yeah, sure. so the, the, mouse, the mouse which is moving about is, is the mouse that we're recording for the, the end customer. Um, so you will be able to see two um, points on the screen. There's one at the top of the screen at the moment, which is my mouse pointer, and the one that's moving was what we recorded for this this user at the time of recording. Perfect. And you can you can see that we. The video progresses through, um, so we automatically change to the next page that the customer saw after they've um, clicked on a link, we'll automatically start playing the next page. Great. So this is, you've obviously you know, given us the main, the main selling point here, but um, I know there's more behind the scenes and more, more stuff you can do with this. So do you want to show us what else, what other features you've got? Yeah, absolutely. I think this is the kind of uh, the, the kind of wild wow factor in, in, in session cams, you know, and particularly when we go and see clients, it's the this is what's happening on your site now. This is what the customer is doing. This is where they're going. This is what they're looking at. Where they're hovering. Uh, how they're engaging with your site. And um, this is a great wow factor. But I think the question now is the so what factor. So what can you do with all this information? How can you utilize this information to, to have a positive impact on your business? And we'll look at some of the reporting uh, that you can draw out of the back of session cam. And this is the, the stuff that's really key, I think. Sure, so I'll, I'll just end this session now. So just close this window. And go back to the activity inside reporting. So we've got a variety of different reporting tools within the in session cam. So this is the Activity Insight Report. What we can do with the Activity Insight Report is show you all the sessions that were recorded uh, on your website. So we're currently viewing the, the sessions that count count and the sessions that were recorded um, on our website. So the good thing about the Activity Insight Report is it allows you to, one, replay all of the sessions, but more importantly, you can start segmenting your sessions by using the filters. Uh, so you can segment sessions by various filter types, and by segmenting, you can drill into sessions that had similar experiences and then replay those sessions to understand common patterns around the session. So for example, you could replay all sessions that um, saw a particular error page and understand why they saw that error page, or potentially if they dropped out at a certain point, understand why they dropped out at that point. So just to demonstrate, we can add some filters to start segmenting these sessions. So I'll click Add Filter. This then brings up a select box with this, all of the different filter types that are currently available within Session Cam. Um, so there's some technical ones like browser type and operating system. There's uh, some user experience related ones like page visited and page views. There's also some interesting ones around fields, so we can filter by field drop off. So, so I can Paul, show you. Sorry, yeah. Paul, just to jump in there. So, so with the browser type, I, I, I could just because I found problems say with Internet Explorer. So could I yeah. um, just say view all Internet Explorer six or seven or eight or you know, and just have a look yeah. at those ones that have had particular problems. Absolutely. So what we can do, if I just select browser type, this will then present the options relevant to that browser. So we set this list, currently it lists all of the different uh, browser versions that are available. So to answer your question, what we can do is select, for example, IE8. And once we've selected IE8, what this is showing us now is that um, it will give us all sessions that use the browser type of IE8. So if we click filter sessions, keep an eye on the total sessions count, that will then reduce, and there were 32. So over the time period, there are 32 sessions that use IE8. So you, by adding the filters, you can start drilling into those sessions of interest. The other thing you can do with the filters as well is say, um, is or is not. So if, for example, you could say, um, page visitors is not a payment completed page to 
your sessions that didn't end up purchasing on your website. So there's lots of ways you can use the filters to generate interesting rules and start uh, analysing the sessions accordingly. Yeah, so can I, I presume then um, I can add multiple filters? Yes, you can. So I've got the ability here to add another filter. So once anything the text starts the process again, so you can then add uh, a different filter type um, and start filtering sessions accordingly. Um, so all of the filters that you add are and statements. So if, for example, I added uh, page visited is payment completion page, in this instance, it would give us all users that visited the payment completion page and used IE8. So in effect, all of the, all of the filters are combined. Again, you can start drilling in more and more into a session. Yeah, so if I, if I, what I've found sometimes is particular pages or, or, or a field or a form is a problem with you know, a certain browser type, I could then, I'd, in analytics, identify the page and then see why that's happening using uh, the, the replay video tool. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. And the next thing to, to show you is, is the field search. So what the field search allows you to do is, is a quick search which you can use to, to search across all fields on your website and then it will match patterns entities into that field. So if, if for example, uh, you have a, um, a website which has a purchase form on it uh, and a customer enters their name into a field um, that does not successfully complete it and then that customer maybe rings your call center, you can then retrieve that session by searching for that specific customer name because they've entered their, their details into a field. Um, so to do this, all you have to do is enter what you're looking for for what customers entered into a field um, by typing in a keyword, then clicking search and it will then return sessions accordingly. Um, you can also use this to find sessions based on our custom variables. So the session cam has the concept of custom variables. So custom variables are a way of you importing additional information into session cam. And then you can use the field search to, to retrieve those sessions. So for example, you may want to look for sessions based on booking reference number. You can push that booking reference number to us as a custom variable, and then you can start um, finding those sessions based on the keyword. Mm. You can also um, use custom variables to pass us additional segmentation information that we don't currently provide in the session account. So, for example, demographic information that you may already know about the customer, that kind of thing. Interesting. So I'm thinking a use for this, say you, you've got a retail site and you put on a new product which you think is going to be selling well for Christmas, you could define a variable within that page to say, you know, new product, and then you'd be able to pick that up with session cam and only see sessions where people have, have seen that pro particular product, whether it be on a you know product page or a category page, they've in some way seen that that product is available. Is that is that right? Absolutely, yeah, you could do, you could do that. A, a real common use of, of the field search is for specific customer support. So where the activity insight report um, is fairly open-ended and um, contains kind of lots of sessions from all of your, your customers, many of our clients use field search to retrieve specific sessions from specific customers. Um, so for example, a customer may contact their support centre and then want to retrieve that, that session, they use the field search to do that. Okay. Cool. Okay. The, the next thing to, to show you is, is heat maps. You might have noticed we've got a heat maps tab at the top. But anywhere within session cam um, where you see a, a URL, um, you can basically start filtering accordingly um, through the heat maps. So if I just hover over this, it brings up a little uh, quick link to our heat maps. So the little icons here represent the different heat map types. So there's mouse, click, scroll, and attention, which I'll take you through. Let's get this. So a little bit like replay, the attention, uh, the heat maps launch in a new window, which maximizes to your screen. And so this is the, is this the heat map for our homepage. So let's take you to the interface. On the screen, we've got um, various information about um, the actual page and the filter criteria. So, by default, we are filtering by the date range that you saw on the Activity Insights screen. And um, there's also been one filter set up. And if you want to change this, you can click the arrows here. And this will show you what we're actually um, filtering by at the moment. So, we're currently generating heat map based on this date range for people that use Intex 4A because we set that up previously. We show you a sessions count. 
So what this test was kind of is showing you that is that over the um, date range, um, there was 32 uh, sessions that um, businesses were sized in IE8, but 14 sessions have been used to generate the heat map in this instance. The reason why it's 14 is because they would have been users that visited the actual home page as so the page was generating um, and actually moved their mouse. So in, in effect, we're using 14 sessions to generate this heat map. In terms of the scalability of our heat maps, we'll use up to 1,000 sessions. Um, so if, for example, based on your criteria, we find 10,000 sessions, we'll use 1,000 sessions to generate the, the heat map and we'll randomize um, that. So we'll pick 1,000 ses uh, sessions at random um, to generate the heat map. Okay. <clears throat> um, we can also select different pages in the interface. So we're currently um, viewing the home page. Um, we can change the page to whatever uh, page you like within your website through this interface. You can also change the heat map type, which I'll show you in a moment. And you can also change the temperature and the opacity of, of the heat map as well, if you want to uh, bring out the heat map more or less, depending on the style of your, of your, uh, of your website. So this is currently the mouse movement heat map. So what we're showing here is that the hot areas of the screen are where the mouse was placed the most across the sessions. Uh, and the cold area is where the mouse was placed the least. So you can start using this data to quickly understand what are the attention grabbing items within your website, what areas are used the most. So you can see within this interface that many people are interested in some of the other clients that we work with and they're also interested in our, our plans and pricing. Um, there's been some interactivity with our carousel as well. I'll change it to the clicking app. So the clicking map is, is similar to the mouse movement heat map, and, but um, part, apart from plotting, you know, actually, instead of plotting mouse movement, we'll plot clicks. So you can see here there's activity around, again, around the, the, the plans and pricing, around the carousel items as well, um, again, around our uh, clients. Uh, interestingly, there's, there's less around the call for actions here, so maybe we need to do some work about uplifting our, our sign up call for actions on our website. I think it's interesting always when you look at the click heat map against the movement heat map because you tend to see a reflection in the two of them and what the click uh, heat map tends to be is a far more refined version of the movement heat map. So it's where people's attention tends to be drawn to and it tends to be the areas that um, you know where you want to get those key messages in. I want to show you uh, the scroll heat map. So this plots the, the scroll bar position uh, across all of those users, so we can then understand whether those users have scrolled or not um, on this page. So naturally, the scroll bar is loaded at the top of the screen when a user goes to a new page. So we get this gradient effect from hot to cold in effect. So as you can see here, the top of the screen is, is very hot. If we scroll down, you can start seeing um, a gradient effect of a going to cold. So what this basically means is you can start understanding where on average users scroll to or not. So you can see naturally uh, there's a divide here where users don't scroll, it starts getting colder and colder and then it hits the bottom and it kind of indicates that this area of the screen across those users was not seen. So again, it's a good indicator of where potentially to place your key sales messages. It's interesting with this example is that these buttons weren't being clicked on um, and actually from a scroll point of view you can see it's in a colder area so it's likely that customers are simply not seen and that's why they're not being clicked on. So it's interesting when you start um, looking at the different heat maps, um, the different insights that you can gain by comparing each one. Okay, so just to ask a tricky question, obviously there's many laptops have many different size windows. Um, sure. So how, how does it cope with understanding all the various windows, sizes and, and screen sizes and resolutions, etc.? So. Good question. Uh, for each uh, heat map, only takes into account uh, the uh, vertical axis in effect. But what we have developed is the what we call an attention heat map. So I'll just light up this heat map. And what this heat map does is it plots the scroll bar position, um, screen resolutions of the customers, and also time to give you the areas of the page which were seen across customers the most. So the hot areas of the page are seen across um, the discussion at the most in effect, and the cold areas were seen the least. So what we can see here is what, what this heat map indicates is that the hot areas where, um, in effect, where the scroll opposition was the most, you can see 
that there is a certain level of heat to the left and right. This would indicate um, different screen resolutions. Um, so there are some users that were using at higher screen resolutions than um, the, the width you can see here. Yeah. And so you can start using this data to understand whether um, the website should be supporting a wider screen resolution as well. So you can see with this that scrolling by itself isn't just the important thing. It's where the users linger because the heat, in effect, the heat map intensifies the longer they leave their scroll bar at certain positions, which is why um, this is slightly colder at the top than kind of this area here, because it would indicate that their scroll bar position is lingering longer around this area. Right, okay. The, the interesting thing about um, this heat map as well, as we can see, if we scroll down to the bottom, this area is actually colder than the areas um, at the top to the left and right of the, the primary design. What this indicates is that less people are actually scrolling than there are using, um, than there are with customers of high screen resolutions. So it basically indicates that the design should probably be adjusted to support higher screen resolutions because that would then reduce the, um, the height of the page itself and thus um, reduce the need for customers to scroll. Yeah, so I think um, you can see to move up your uh, calls to action now. So I think you found some good insight on it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's definitely an action that we can take Good stuff. Okay. The next thing to show you is the um, conversion insights. So Activity Insight, which was shown before, was an open ended report where you can get access to all your sessions and start segmenting accordingly. Uh, conversion insights uh, kind of flips on its head and the focus is on your key process that is in your, your website. Um, you can then start analysing visits to certain pages within those key processes. More importantly, start analysing drop-off as well. Okay, so what we're seeing here is uh, the, the free subscribers funnel that we've set up. So this tracks uh, users that go onto our website and then sign up to our free trial. So what you can see at the top of the screen is the ability to change the date range. You can add filters as well, so you can start segmenting your, your funnels. Um, so you can drill into funnels that have um, similar experiences and that kind of thing. Below the, the filter sessions box shows you the actual funnel itself. So this is a, a three-page funnel. So the blue bars are each page in the funnel. And what we show you is the total number of visitors um, that visited the pages in the funnel. The number that dropped off at that point didn't progress past that point in the funnel. Um, we show that both as an actual and also an overall percentage. And at the bottom, we give you an overall conversion rate. So this is showing us that going from sign up to uh, the trial completion, we get a conversion rate of roughly 42% over this date range. And so this is quite interesting because um, within the funnel, uh, you can start analysing your key drop-off pages. Note that there's no limitations to the, the number of pages you can add to the funnel. So you can have a, a funnel which is, say, 20 pages long if you have a fairly long form process. This is really great for analysing uh, things like uh, basket to payment processes, uh, quote related processes, uh, any kind of real lengthy form related processes. This is really good at analysing. So what we show you below the actual chart itself is the same information but in a table view. And the interesting thing about this view is you can start then drilling into sessions accordingly. So what we can show you is sessions that visited certain pages um, or sessions that dropped off at certain pages. So then to replay sessions, for example, that dropped off on a sign-up page, you simply have to click the link. It will then show you um, all of the sessions that didn't progress beyond that point within the funnel. So you can start replaying those sessions to understand why those customers didn't progress beyond that point. I think that's very key because, you know, as you say, we see in, in our analytics packages, you can see a drop-off report, but you don't necessarily know why. So having session cam as well and being able to use this, this page particularly to really just target just the, the sessions that uh, people did drop off at particular stages and then actually see what they were doing on the site it gives you the the why as as well as you know as well as just knowing that seven people dropped off you can actually see potentially why yes absolutely i think that was key and refer to that at the beginning it's not really a replacement for for an analytics package it's, it's much more of a complement for an analytics package and it allows you um, to identify very 
you know, specific actions that customers are or aren't taking and exactly where the customers get to and how far through a process they get to. Paul will take us through now and uh, we'll look at some page details as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So this, this is the, the high level report for the funnel, which um, is, is quite uh, a common report that you'll see. The next level, though, is we take you down to a field level drop off. So available next to these links here, it will take you to a report specific to that page. I'll just click on the sign up uh, report. So what you can see here, if I just scroll down, um, we'll show you a summary of the data um, that we've collected for that page. So we'll show you the total number of visitors to that page. The total number that started entering data, so that means that the users interacted with at least one field on that page. Um, so you can see there that 64% of users that got to the page um, interacted with at least one field. So there's a fair proportion that got to that page and almost left immediately. We also show you um, the total that then moved on to the next page in the funnel. So around 57% of users successfully completed the form. Below this, we start showing you the field activity within the page. Um, so we mark drop-off against the last field that the customer interacted with um, during their session on that page. So what we can do is um, start then replaying those sessions to understand why the user has dropped off of, of those points. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that the user had issues particularly with that field, but what it does mean is that the users had very similar experiences because that was the last field they interacted with. It's also very common that the last, the high, a high drop-off field will have issues related to it, and that's why it's high drop-off. So, for example, um, user, users might be receiving validation error messages against that field, be attempting to try and complete it, and then eventually fail and drop off from your processes. So, it's a really neat way, in effect, of plating a fairly low-level uh, segment, in effect, of users that dropped off at a very specific point. Mm, yeah, just, just a. I'm sure you've thought of this um, and come across this many times, but so privacy for users, if they're entering credit card details, um, how, how can you ensure sort of privacy for, for those users? So well, That's a really good question, and effectively what we do is we, we, we don't record that particular field entry. Um, so what you will see if somebody was uh, entering details, credit card details, etc., uh, or any payment details at all, as you would see the fields, we star them out. So you can tell that it may be 11 keystrokes, but you don't know what the keystrokes are, it'll just appear as 11 asterisks on, on, on the replay, so we don't record that that uh, um, that detail. And we cannot not record any kind of detail at all on any of the, the, the fields. If you tell us which fields that you, as a customer, don't want recorded, we'll make sure they're not recorded. And equally, Paul and his team come across uh, circumstances where they're asking the clients, uh, our clients and our customers, you know, uh, just double checking before we go live, do you really want to record this detail? So, yeah. so, so with, our, with our enterprise clients, we work very closely with them during uh, the setup phase. And we discuss their requirements around privacy. Uh, different clients will have different stances. We always don't record, um, we never record any payment information. Um, but there may be some uh, clients that have very specific needs because they're capturing some unusual fields on the website, maybe reference numbers, that kind of thing, specific to that client. Um, we'll discuss with them whether we want to star those or not. In, in terms of the, the, the field masking, field starring, um, we never capture that information. That's all done in the client's browser. So it's not a situation where we capture that information and then retrospectively star them out on our servers. Yeah. It's in the case that we never know uh, what. Uh, the customer enters, we simply know the length of characters that they enter into a field. Yeah, because privacy is obviously a very hot topic at the moment, and um, so it's good to know that you can basically make all the session, sessions completely anonymous. Um, that was a concern I was thinking of, so that's, that's good. So, is, are there any other features that you'd like to show us? Um, there are some, some other points, and um, this is kind of a, a quick overview of, of the key things within session cameras. We do have other items such as um, the ability to create sh uh, shared segments. Um, so where I've shown you before, uh, we've got the ability to filter sessions. You can in effect create segments where you can save those filters so you can instantly retrieve those when you log back in. Uh, we also have um, the ability to send out email alerts based on segments. So for example, um, you can set up um, an alert for all users that maybe store an error page and receive that through email. We also have an, an API which does the same thing as well. Okay. 
And just to, in terms of um, if someone wants to put session cam onto their site, typically how many how many sort of development hours are we looking at? Is it is it a complex installation or is it fairly simple? It, it, it's fairly simple. I mean, of course, every every client of ours differs depending on their development process, but it, it's simply a matter of placing a uh, little JavaScript snippet onto the web pages they want to record. Um, we will then do uh, some configuration at this end, which doesn't take us much time at all. Um, and then after the testing, we'll then go live and start recording their sessions accordingly. Um, in terms of overall effort, we're talking less than um, a week. Usually, it could be a, a few days uh, of man day effort. Mm, brilliant. Okay. Well, thanks, guys. I think that's given us a very, very good overview of, of everything you can you you can do. Um, it seems to complement analytics very well and the kind of services we offer. So um, it's always good to see see technologies like this. Um, so if there's, you know, if someone watching this video might be interested in session cam, what's the best way to go about um, to, to getting it, getting it essentially? Yeah, the easiest way to get it is probably to go to the session cam website. We've got contact forms, we've got details on there. We have. Um, an online chat as well, so you can engage us through all those ways. And on the uh, right at the very top of the page is our telephone number as well. So, um, you know, the, the, there's a multiple uh, choice of ways to, or multiple ways you can contact us, uh, and, and we'll respond fairly quickly. Um, we have customers uh, all around the world now. Um, so, um, whilst we don't operate 24 hours, session cameras out there working 24 hours. <laughs> I'd add that you know obviously this is this is as you say it works very well with with analytics so it's good to know um, where to put this on your site what you need to record I'm sure you guys can help that we can also help out with that at Elisa so um, so yeah we look forward to uh, to seeing seeing some of our clients using this software and uh, well they are already but um, some more of them <laughs> Absolutely. I think they complement each other hand in hand and with the expertise and, and the analysis that you guys can provide and the, the, the benefits of session cam and the recorded sessions and the detail that you can get down to, uh, they just complement each other really well. I think it's, a, I think it's a, a great match. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for your time, um, Murray and Paul, and um, that was a great demo and uh, I'm sure we'll be, we'll be in touch in the future. Thanks a lot. Speak to you soon, guys. Thank Thanks, you. guys. Thanks.